Uh, good morning. Uh, we're continuing today with Chapter 3, Section 4, which talks about uh, counting principles. And the big question in this section is uh, the phrase, how many? How many ways can something happen? Uh, yesterday we did uh, the fundamental counting principle, and we started talking about basic permutations. Uh, fundamental counting principle, just to recap, is really nothing more than uh, deciding how many options, when every time you have a, a scenario that has multiple steps and each step has a number of options to choose from, it's simply a matter of identifying how many options you have for each step and multiplying all of those steps together. Um, then we start talking about this thing called a permutation. So I made a little cheat sheet here in Google Sheets. I'll share this document with you. Uh, permutation is used when you have X options. I should change that because later on I, I realized N was the better variable to use for this. N options, and all of them are being chosen. Uh, the formula for this is what we call N factorial. Uh, that exclamation point is a mathematical notation. That it's called a factorial, and it simply means we're going to start at whatever that number N is, and we're going to multiply it by uh, numbers that decrease by one repeatedly until we get all the way down to one. Um, the example I have here is if we have five exclamation point, we would read that as five factorial, and that is equal to five times four times three times two times one. Um, so that's not a difficult concept to figure out. Obviously, you know, five factorial comes all the way out to 120. If you have something like 20 factorial, you're talking about getting very large numbers very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, the next thing you're going to talk about today, and it starts with example four, I believe, in your textbook, is permutations of n choosing r. In a lot of situations, you're giving, you might have 10 things or a number of things to choose from, but you're not choosing all of them. And we want to know how many different possible ways can we choose our number of options out of 10 total options to choose from. The formula for this is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So the first thing you're going to need to identify in any problem is what is my n value? What are my total number of options? And what is my r value? How many of them am I actually choosing? <clears throat> when do we use this? First key to this is that there's no repetition allowed. The same thing cannot be chosen multiple times. Second thing that is very important is that if we pick the same three items and we change the order we put them in, it counts as a different outcome. The best example I can give of this, and I realize none of my students at school actually use these anymore, but the, the locks on your locker are a good example of this. Uh, they don't repeat numbers. You won't get the same number multiple, three times in a row. And if you have a, uh, a numbers for your locker to open your locker, if you change the order of those numbers, it won't open. Um, the perfect example of a permutation. We Everybody always says they're locker combination. It's actually a locker permutation. A combination is a different mathematical thing. So uh, a good example of when this would be used. Um, we have a, a school club. The club has 10 students in it, and they need to elect three students as a president, a vice president, and a treasurer. So you have 10 students to choose from, and you're choosing three of them. But the key to this is that by giving them titles, president, vice president, and treasurer, you've created a ranking system. Um, and if you pick three students, uh, give them uh, fake names, let's call them John, uh, Jack, and Mary, uh, I don't know. Um, if, we, if we rank these as president, vice president, and treasurer right across, if we switch their order, even though it's the th same three students who've been chosen, if all of a sudden Jack is the president and Mary's the vice president and John becomes the treasurer, that is a different outcome. Okay? So, perfect example of a permutation. Uh, ten objects choosing, or ten possibilities, three choices being made, and different orders of the same three outcomes will be counted differently.
the next topic is the combinations of n choosing r. Uh, very similar to permutation, sometimes it's tough to tell the difference. The difference between a permutation and a combination is when you get your three choices at the end, if you change the ordering, does it count as a different outcome? When we talk about a combination, we're talking about scenarios where we take those three outcome, those three choices and switch the order that it really doesn't affect the outcome. And so um, we will have a smaller numeric answer for these because certain number of outcomes will count as the same thing. And keeping with the school club type of example here, uh, we still have our 10 students in our club, but instead of choosing a ranked order of three students, we're going to just uh, create an executive committee. So there's no ranking to the three students. They, it doesn't matter if they're the first chosen or the last chosen. They're still considered all equals in the executive committee. Uh, so that would be an example of where you would want to use a combination. Um, the formulas for these, you're probably going to need a calculator for this because sometimes these numbers can get really big. But I will tell you, if you th remember that factorials are multiplication, uh, in many, many cases, you can get an awful lot of things to cancel out and make your multiplications very easy. Um, if we think about this one down here, our numerator, which would have been 10 factorial, uh, our denominator would have been, let me give this an underline here, our denominator, which would have been n minus r, so we'd have 10 minus 3. 10 minus 3 is going to give us 7 factorial. So when we think about multiplying this out, we would have 10 times 8. Sorry, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And I'm going to put a factorial on that because, again, it's going to go 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And our denominator is 7 factorial, which means that this 7 factorial in here And this 7 factorial in the denominator, you're going to cancel out. And all you're going to be left with is 10 times 9 times 8. And that's a much easier math uh, you know, multiplication to do. 9 times 8 is 72 times 10 is 720. So we've got our answer there. We would have 720 possibilities. So... Keeping in mind that this is all multiplication steps, you will get a lot of things to cancel out, which will make it a lot easier for you to do. We can try this one really quick over here. Again, we would have our numerator would be 10 factorial. And our denominator in this case would be n minus r. So 10 minus 3 is going to give us 7 factorial times r factorial. So we're going to have an extra 3 factorial out here. Okay. And put in our underline so it looks like a fraction for us. Again, we're going to see very much the same thing happen here. Okay, we're going to have that 7 factorial cancel out, and we're going to still have a 3 factorial multiplication in the denominator, which we're not going to want to have crossed out. <clears throat> so our end value here is going to be 10 times 9 times 8 divided by 3 times 2 times 1 in my fraction bar. Get over here because I didn't do it there either. Um, that's going to give us 720 divided by 6. And we could probably do that pretty quick, 720 divided by 6, and get your answer. Use the power of Google Sheets. 
So we get 120. So if we're only doing an executive committee, we get one sixth as many. Um, if you think about it, the reason that this is smaller and the reason we still divide by this six and where this three factorial comes from is this fact. If you had three students, and think about fundamental counting principle from yesterday. If we had three students and we had to, to figure out how many ways you can order three students, you'd have three choices for the first student, followed by two choices for the second student, followed by one choice for the final student. Three times two times one is six. It's three factorial. So that extra division step that we have to do in this problem is us actually figuring out how many different ways we can order these three students and dividing by that because those orderings all count as the same thing. So little uh, uh, explanation today on doing these permutations and combinations of n choosing r. There are some shortcuts that you can do. I'm not going to show you those just yet. Uh, but there are shortcuts in a TI-84, there are shortcuts in Google yeah. Sheets, and I'm pretty sure there are shortcuts in Desmos as well. So if you want to take the time to investigate that on your own, we have this thing called the Internet. You can use it for more than social media. Go ahead and, and start looking up how to do permutations and combinations in whichever technology tool you utilize uh, most often. So thanks a lot, and have a good day. We'll see you in class.